Can you describe the sensation of sitting in the locker room as that gent gives a half-time team talk. He uses real life stuff. He relates it back to life and family and, and stuff and it just makes you want to go and play for him. It's incredible to be here with one of the most charismatic, singularly gifted players in the Premier League. A gent who's dashing dribbles and clairvoyant assists. They're nearly as mesmerising as his unshakable smile. The taxi tattooed on his arm is for a Just Jack song, but it may as well be for any defender unlucky to try and mark him. It's a joy to welcome England international, Elvis connoisseur, roast dinner alpha and Tottenham dart celebrating poet. It's Mr James Madison. Hi Rog, hope you are mate. I want to take you back to the summer, James. You've said when you first talked to new coach, that Australian care bear, Ange Postacoglu, about joining Tottenham, you thought, quote, wow, there's that same self-belief that I've got in myself. And from the outside, Ange seems singular, full of empathy, life truth. But tell us, what do you remember of that first phone call? Did he immediately feel different to other managers? Um, well, we were actually on international break. Uh, it, was in, it was the summer international duty, so the season finished. Um, obviously, at this point in the end, to be fair, because we got relegated with Leicester. But um, no, I remember speaking to him and just going into it with like a open mind and just just hearing what he had to say. And, and he had obviously only just gone into Tottenham himself, which was made it a little bit more interesting because he didn't really have any knowledge of the football club, really. So I, I was kind of more just going after info off him and how he works and stuff. But um, no, I've said it numerous times in the, in the media that that call after that call, I kind of was 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 drawn into him and and, and the way he spoke and, and the way he spoke about me and how he how his teams play and stuff. So uh, I came off the phone thinking, I think that could be the one. Yeah, <laughs> you've called Ange one of the best managers you've ever seen when it comes to motivating players. I've got to say, whenever I hear one of his press conferences, I learn as much about life as I do about football. You know, he talks about mental health joy, the challenges of humanity. I always feel ready to crash through walls just for, you know, for Ange, and I'm just an old ball bloke. Can you describe the sensation of sitting in the locker room as that gent gives a half-time team talk at his best? Locker room, changing room here, mate, in England. <laughs> um, no, nah, he, he's a really good, I've said that before, because he's a really good motivational speaker. You know, he, he has this way about him when he talks to a group of players, he's... He's almost like a like an alpha male, you know. The way he when every, when he's talking, everyone's listening. You 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 don't really you can't even blink, you know. One of them, and he's like a he's very good at motivating. So like the, the team talks he does normally, like the day before the game, even the day of the game in the changing room, they get you going. They get uh, they get you ready to go out and play because he's demanding of you. And you just said like in the media when he when he talks in the press conferences and all the stuff you see on the socials and stuff. You just said that you obviously learn about life and stuff, and that's 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 the kind of guy he is. He uses he uses real life stuff to compare to football. It's hard to explain if you if you haven't actually heard one of his talks, but he relates it back to life and family and, and stuff, and it just makes you want to go and play for him and, and and work for him and run and work hard for him. So uh, he's got that natural natural talent. Yeah, I mean the results have been startling. You've got two goals, five assists. Watching you as a collective, though, Tottenham, so buccaneering, swashbuckling in attack, in a way that's really ripped straight from Spurs' traditional DNA. What does it feel like, James, when you're breaking forward in transition? Seems like Ange permits you, all of you, almost encourages you to be unafraid to make mistakes. And it's led to you kind of playing just audacious free football. Yeah, and that's, part, and that's kind of some of the stuff he said to me when we were talking about that phone call we had and, 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 and the type of player I am. I'm that type of player anyway. So when you've got a manager who, who allows that and wants, wants you to do that and is happy for you to do that and be free and, and take up positions and, and be that, have that natural instinct to, to your game, it always helps, you know, especially as an attacking player because you want to have that freedom to go and influence the game and that's, that's when I want my best, when I've got... When I've got freedom to go and take the ball, if I want to drop deep, if I want to stay high, if I want to pull to the left, pull to the right, he, he's okay with that because he knows it can have an influence on the game. As long as you're structured and out of possession, you're working hard and stuff, that, that, that free flow in and that freedom in possession obviously helps a player like me and I've had a good start to this season and hopefully that can continue. Yeah. You, you, you talked recently about being the alpha at the Sunday roast. I see you on the field asserting yourself as the alpha of a team that can really challenge internally do you feel that your football's gone next level in a sustained way at Tottenham um 
what I would say is you definitely get more more praise and more what's the word I'm looking for people notice more because you're at a bigger football club there's, there's performances that I've played at, at Tottenham which have been spoken about as a really really good performance when actually I've come off and I'm thinking I was alright I, I was okay I, was, I could have been a lot better whereas no disrespect a team like Leicester a bit of a smaller club in terms of the Premier League and, and stature you come off and you think you've played really well and you've had a really good game but it doesn't get spoken about as much just because Tottenham's a bigger team and we're right at the top end of the Premier League so um but I, I, no, I feel like I'm playing probably arguably the best football I've played, to be fair. Um, I'm at an age now where I'm, I'm experienced as well. I'm, I've played a lot of football matches now, coming through the lower leagues and stuff as well in my early career. So I've played a lot of football. I'm, I've seen a lot of stuff. I'm still only 26, got a long way to go. But I'd probably say, yeah, I'm probably in the, the form of my, my career, I would say, in terms of the levels I want to set. I, I love that, that we're all losing our minds about James Madison's football and you're walking off being like, yeah, I think I was a six. Nah, that, that's happened a couple of times this season. Like, I've actually come off and had to do an... In- there was one game, I, I can't remember which one it was. I think I got maybe even got man of the match and I was just like, there was no chance I was man of the match then, but like, I'll take it. I'm still going <laughs> on the mantelpiece. I always wonder that. That's amazing. But as well as the wins, as well as the goals, as well as the undeserved Man of the Match awards in your mind only, there's been so many delirious moments. You know, your persona on social media is so self-aware, James, whether it's mocking your mate Trent Alexander-Arnold on England duty, still asking for a replay, or being unafraid to post a shot of yours that flew out for a throw-in. And at Bournemouth, you scored. Cue the dart, Sally. The Bournemouth fans losing their minds, chanting, and I paraphrase, Gareth Southgate's right, you effing crap. And you responded brilliantly by moving the corner you were taking off the circle and then flashing a brilliant smile up at the crowd with a wink, later posting the moment on TikTok. 16 million views. Nice. While that's happening, in-game, are you aware that you're creating social media gold? No, 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 no. That, that, that's all the stuff you mentioned there. They're just off the cuff stuff, you know. Like, because that, for example, the corner incident, that doesn't happen if I'm not getting abused, you know. Like, you can't. <laughs> there's no structure to it. It's uh, go over to take a corner. They're they're effing and blinding at me, and just one uh, one way for me to get one up in it. So uh, that's that's more off the cuff stuff. No, I, I like that the pantomime villain type vibe that sometimes is created, especially in away games, especially because the type of player I am and, and, and even the type of person I am, sometimes I don't mind getting a bit of stick. I know that I know that it comes with the, the character that I have, but I don't mind that. It's all banter back and forth. But I like to give it as much as I can take it. I love it. You're like to the fans, lads, just abuse me for a minute. I'm going to do something. It's going to be social media gold. You're like an English Mr. Beast. Tottenham fans, I've got to say, it's been magical. Watching them sing, we've got our Tottenham back. You are currently top of the table. Zero losses from the first eight. But Ange came on this show, told everybody, the first month of the season and the Poster Coglu, it's always turbulent. My ideas take time to root in. But they haven't. So what are we watching? A Tottenham who are top, but are still yet to find their true Ange ball form. Are we living like an Ange dream that we'll wake up from? A beautiful bubble that will burst. Got a good way with words, don't you? It's like you're reading a poem on that question there. Um, no, you can't. Obviously, it's impossible to predict the future. And, and they'll definitely, we're obviously on the up at the minute. The trajectory is up. But there, there is, a season in the Premier League is like a roller coaster. You know there's going to be there's bumps and it's going to come down at times because it's impossible. There's only ever one team that's even gone and beaten without losing the game, you know. And um, But there's always going to be bumps and hits in the road. It's one of them. It, we, we're... You talk about what the manager said. He um, he's obviously come in. He's got his way of playing, the way he wants to his teams to play, the structure within that, and it will take time. There's sometimes we'll, we've come off a couple of games where we've actually won, and he hasn't been too happy with the performance. Where in terms of how we're playing his way, you know. So sometimes we we have a lot of quality, you know, in the, in the team. We you can still sometimes win a game when you're not at your best because we have. Players like Sonny and, and Kulisevsky in them front areas, Richarlison, all, all these type of players that, that, can, that can produce moments to win games when you're not actually at your best. And, and, and no manager's ever happy when you're not, when you're not at your best. And he, he always wants us to play how he wants to play. And, that, and that's like non-negotiable. Um, so sometimes we might, like I said, we've won a couple of games where we haven't been at our best in terms of the way he wants to play. And he hasn't been happy. So in terms of, in terms of him getting to his level... 
that is probably he probably sees still a lot of improvement to go and a long way to go to get to exactly how he wants. But we've been picking up results and. and and winning games late and stuff like that, which is which is always a good time when you're not your best. Jack Grealish recently posted an Instagram story outside of your room in England camp where you could hear Elvis, can't help falling in love with you, blasting. And he asked, music choice, class or miles off it? 66% said class. James, what classic other than that one do you listen to that will surprise people to get you hyped up? Can we get one other James Madison pump-up song for the playlist? Wow. Rod Stewart, Maggie May. Oh, mate, 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 mate. I've got to say, the Madison sideburns, full black leather suit, big glasses, Elvis Vegas era comeback special karate before the game. To you. What did you vote for? Did you vote class or miles off it? For you, Elvis. Mate, there's only one answer. It is full on class. And I just love that singularity of music leading to that singularity of performance. To you, to your club, to your continued success, to your joy. Thanks, James. Cheers, buddy.